the rear foil to the skinny body. Just about to launch it to Fisherman's. Still just a very light bay run. Just a boat ramp out in the Wongabra Peninsula. Uh, I'll try and make the most of this north forward while I've got it. I was thinking about switching out to X, the Axis one for a back-to-back, -back, but I'll just try the different rear foil. Water's a bit cold today. Alright, I'll see you out there. The paddling this board is quite a bit different to the Axis. Uh, this is sort of a displacement hull and uh, it's quite rounded underneath so the stability is very different uh, as far as I can tell it rolls more underfoot uh, than the axis and the other planing boards I guess but even though that's the case the roll isn't bad because it's quite circular it's a very consistent feeling so it's it does seem to roll more than the axis, but in that rolling is actually quite, uh, you can't call it stable, but it's a, a regular movement. And so it's actually quite easy to adapt to, whereas the axis rolls less, but when it does shift on the water, it kind of takes you by surprise, the shift movement. So that's quite interesting and worth pointing out. Uh, tracking is very similar between the boards. And the weights are similar. This would be similar to the 8 foot um, axis at 120 litres. This one is the 710 north at 115 litres. Uh, so 5 litres less. And it, does, it feels like they've taken that out of the nose. So the nose of this board is really light, which is cool. Uh, once you're up and riding, you don't want much out in front of you or behind you. And a lot of the volume in this board seems to be in the centre. So that's cool. I like that. Um, riding it on foil that first run uh, felt like a smaller board than it did on the water. So, yeah, that's pretty awesome actually. Uh, I wonder if more companies will go in that direction because it seems to be correct to me. Dropped off a bit here. The bumps are, well hold on, so the conditions are 12 knots, but once it hits the uh, landmass just to my left it drops significantly so it might be nine knots where i am right now but it's had uh, 12 knots blowing into it and that 12 knots has had about three kilometers of pitch and then another two kilometers of pitch at nine knots so five kilometers of pitch at maximum 12 knots and then i'm riding the bumps for the next two kilometers or 2.2 whatever it is army the fishermen's and I expect to just paddle up once um, some good bumps here for paddling up let's uh, do that now Forty skinny on, fourteen oh one. Wait for the right bump. And the right bump, we're just waiting for something that gives us a touch of a push and really just opens up a trough in front of us that we can um, use to try and paddle up. Instead of going up a hill, we want to go flat or downhill. That could be us. Here we go. Nice and easy. Wait for that right bump, it's all very 
civilized. And also, um, I was just on the 35 skinny, so even just going up to the 40 skinny feels a lot more secure. So now I want to see if there's less glide. Like, what's the sacrifice? What's happening? So need to work out the correct start for the forward. high and efficient, not much energy. And then try and um, time our trajectories with bumps. So if you see a bump in the distance, you know sometimes as the crow flies, it's not your best bet to get to it because you'll get to it too early and you want it to build. So, try and, try and time your run into a little segment with where you want to end up. You know, there's a lot of nuance to the downwinding and a lot of it will just come over time with pattern recognition. Um, very much like surfing. You know, you first start to surf, you don't really know what's going on, so you just paddle for anything, and you paddle your hardest, and you try and get heaps of paddles in, and then the wave catches you. But as you get more experience, you start finding, seeing familiar waves, and you think, I've caught this wave before, something very similar, and then you know you're going to catch it, because you caught it the last time. And it's just that knowledge um, that removes a lot of the doubt and just that alone um, just puts you in a great state for making things work and efficient. So I know when I'm going to get to the bump. So I don't have to work hard often to get to it because I can tell my current trajectory that I'm going to get there. I can see how much power it holds. I can see my next move from there and so instead of panicking and rushing to it and then rushing on from it I put in a bit of power that's going to get me to it and I sit back and relax and glide make my way to it and then uh, move to the next thing and it's all very relaxed or as relaxed as I can make it you know you're still reliant on the ocean's energy and if it's not offering much you know you've got to supplement it and then uh, the better you ride the more energy you have to input yourself so when you're first starting it's obviously very hard because everything's a bit of a panic and you finally get up and you don't want to go down and you fight to the bitter end and you blow out your legs but it's worth it you start getting rides and eventually that panic will wear off and you'll start thinking more and doing a bit of sense of timing distances, mask type but uh, there's always work to be done there's always gains to be had I'm always riding too low Um, but I'm working within what I've got for condition so even though I might be riding a bit low I know that what I'm doing works and it's fine and I can get to the end and I can fill, do the whole day and do 10 runs but I could always be better and uh, who knows if I did it better maybe I could do 12 runs You also got to try new stuff. At the start, it's all new. 
So everything, you're trying everything new, but when you start to get things dialed, you know, you can hold your progress and you think that you're good enough. Definitely happens with the pumping. So you've got to keep, um, keep trying new things. Force yourself to fall off. Do something that's going to make you fall off. You know, ride so high on the mast that you're going to breach. Whatever it is, aim to do it once a day or once a week. And just force some progress. Like now, I'm going to try ride high enough. Well, I'm not going to try fall off because I don't want to ruin the video. For me, I don't want to get grips on the lens, but I'm going to try ride as high as I can. Not the whole time. But, um, still got troughs and bumps you got to think, think about, you know, it's not flat water. So I guess one other lesson for today would be your foil is in it in front of the board. So all, a lot of this navigation, you know, we're looking and we're following our nose and the nose of the board, but the foil is actually between our feet. So you've got to actually start thinking about your height from the point of view of your foil. The foil is the only thing that matters. So think about where that foil is between your feet. And then use that as your height adjustment. Because often your front of your board is hanging out over a trough. And so you're like, oh, I'm like a metre and a half in the air and I've only got a metre mass. So I might, must be riding super high. It's impossibly high. But then if you actually think about between your feet, your board's probably touching the top of the crest and you're riding 10 centimetres high, not the one and a half that your visual cue is doing. So imagine where the soles of your feet are, so your back foot, for example, and then gauge your height using the back of your foot, the underside of your heels. And then you truly start realising how high you are. That's all I'm going to say on that. Downwind Dave said it recently. When you do ride high and you feel it, it's like getting a shot of nitrous to your system. It's quite right. It is how it feels. You get like the super boost all of a sudden. The glass. Quickest way to get my ass tight is to try pump out the front of the wave, to try pop out. Them, but the curved bottom was such a regular feeling. I held it. Whew, holy shit. 
this gorgeous suite that pairs so nicely with the access foils. It's like having a whole new setup when you change something as drastic as a board or a front foil or a rear foil. It just keeps everything so interesting. Okay, there's a bit of work at the end. Pumping up wind. Maybe 100 meters. We'll call it 100, might be 80. Anyway, I hope you enjoy uh, getting super stoked by reading your guys' responses in the comments. Um, you all seem like GCs, so keep it up, keep subscribing. If you haven't su subscribed, uh, do so. And uh, hit me up, you know, I'm, I'm reading all the comments. Anything you want to say or ask or call me out on, do it. And uh, I'll try to respond reasonably quick.